Hey everyone, Diogo Marques here, your friend in sales. Today I want to share with you a couple of numbers, some statistics, so you can have a better grasp of what you are doing and what to work for. These are numbers coming from the Million Dollar Roundtable and they set up essentially, they pretty much talk with like the top producers and they figured out kind of a benchmark of the numbers that these people usually run for and the numbers that they achieve when they kind of, when they, at the end of the year, when they submit their annual production. So without any further ado, let's, let's dig into this. So here are the numbers. If you make 60 calls a day, which is a pretty, like a, it's an achievable number in between 50 and 60 calls a day. So let's set, set this up at 60 calls a day. You're going to have people say yes to meeting, to the meeting. It's a 12% average. So what this means is 12% times 60, that's 7.2. So let's round this up to seven people. So what this means is you call 60 people a day and you're going to get seven people. They are going to tell you yes to a meeting. Okay. Now out of these seven people, the ratio is 50%, meaning the no shows people that don't show up for the meeting are, let's say in this specific case, it would be three and a half. So let's set this at three people. So what this means is essentially you are going to close three people. So four didn't show up. We're going to set this from like a, a least number so it can be more realistic, even a worst case scenario. So out of the seven people coming from the 60 calls that you made, they said yes to you, four didn't show up, three are, uh, they said yes to the meeting and they'd show up for the meeting. Now, the closing ratio usually is around one out of three. So what this means is out of these three meetings, you're going to close one. So let's come to these uh, numbers again, 60 calls a day on a consistent basis. And let's say for now, we just do Mondays to Fridays. Let's set up different strategies for Saturdays and Sundays. So Monday to, uh, to Friday, you're going to do 60 calls a day. And out of these 60 calls, you're going to get seven meetings. Out of these seven meetings, four people are not going to show up and three are going to show up. And out of these three people, you're going to close one. It's either some, something regards the, the underwriting process or about pricing, some aspect, you're going to lose them. You just need to account for these numbers. And remember, these are not fudged numbers. These are industry statistics from top producers. Okay. So once again, 60 people, 12% ratio of people that say yes to the meeting. So seven people, four of them are going to say, uh, four of them are going to uh, disappear out of nowhere. So like you're only going to get three people and out of these three people, you're going to close one. Okay. Now the next question is regarding the amount of premium that th that person is going to pay. And now this is the interesting part. So let's say you are going to run through individuals. Let's say it's like a one person operation and they do like, let's say 100 K a year in, in revenue, something like that. So pretty much like between one and 2000 a year, they, they pretty much okay with it. So let's set this up for 2000. So from Monday to Friday, so that's five days a week, 2000 premiums that equates to 10,000 premiums from Monday to Friday that you're going to um, uh, submit as annual production because you're going to, you're going to, um, you're going to actually follow through with these numbers. Now, 10,000 times 52 weeks, that's a little bit above uh, 500k. So it's 520k. Now, what makes this interesting is that for the same amount of effort, if that person has a girlfriend or has a, a business partner or has a, a wife or something like that, and you just kind of like double th this number, just the amount of premium, right? You just pass the 1 million mark, right? This is how you're going to uh, submit $1 million in annual production. That's it. It's the multiplication factor, the inherently like uh, kind of hidden part of this, this hidden piece that is going to allow you to have a larger premium. I'll give another example. Let's say the same company, it was like a mom and pop shop. So 2000, 2000, so 4,000, you already went through the 1 million mark. It's like one zero forty thousand. So let's say they have employees and you set up some annual group policy, something like that. Right. And you essentially, instead of 4,000, you are making 10,000. You're out, you're now up to 2.6 million because it's 10,000 times five times 52. 
it's the same amount of work. Essentially, you go there, it's just a little bit more paperwork, essentially. So you go there, the decision maker says yes, right? His wife says yes, right? And then you submit something like as a group policy or something like that for the whole company. If they have 10 employees, right? Or have they 100 employees, right? You're just multiplying this number. So I want you to be aware of one, th essentially two things from, two takeaways from this, this um, call. Essentially it's about consistency, which is a bitch. Let's call it what it is, it's a bitch. There are days that I'm very consistent and there are days like this that I'm a little bit pissed off because I get a lot of cancellations. And to be honest, I shouldn't be pissed off because I, I should like be uh, continuing doing calling, but for some reason just, well, I rather like have at least have one moment that I can share my thoughts with people. Maybe that can help someone like where they are watching this. If this help, if this is helpful, thank you. Because from the bottom of my heart, at least I can help someone today. So that's my point here. So what this comes down to essentially is that, and this is something that you have to realize, and uh, let's address the, the big elephant in the room, which is consistency. This, this is gonna take a toll on you. This is gonna take a toll on you because you're gonna have pretty much like, if this is a funnel essentially, because for 60 people, right? You're gonna get seven and then four disappear out of, out of, and then you get three and out of those three, you're gonna close one, right? This is nerve wracking, right? But what happens is something pretty magical, which is if you keep doing this on a consistent basis, you're gonna have like three meetings and another three and another four and another, then you close one. You see, you start getting the thing up and running. And if you let your emotions get the best out of you, you're gonna fail, you're gonna quit. You're gonna get out of the call, right? And the whole thing starts crumbling again. So the main point to this is actually sometimes I, I do this sometimes when, when I'm like, like having trouble figuring th something out. I try to see where does this situation apply in a different setting. And what I found is that when I was doing door to door, I, I was pretty much doing this, but I was actually doing this um, kind of unconsciously. I, I, um, I wasn't aware that I was actually doing this and pretty much like not paying that much attention, but, but essentially the process was the same. I'll give an example. Let's say you and I, we went, uh, we went inside a building that has uh, 100 units, right? It's like 10 floors, each floor with 10 units, something like that. We have a bunch of those here. So essentially, when you go through that building, right? Like a bunch of people are not, not at home, right? So you knock on the door, right? You, you go to the door and then you knock on the doorbell and it's just, no one's there, right? And then there are people that they are at home and not gonna open, right? And then you're gonna get people that do open, right? And you don't close them. And then you're gonna get one or two, right? This is pretty much the same thing. You're gonna call people. Some of them will not answer. Some of them will, right? And out of those people, right? Some of them will be a bunch of, a bunch of idiots, right? And some of them actually would say yes to the meeting, right? And out of these people, right? Four of them will disappear and three of them actually you have the meeting, right? And out of these three people, right, you close one. So essentially, the problem is ourselves, essentially, because you need to stay consistent. And just when you start doing your day, knowing full well that you're already gonna have cancellations, you're already gonna have people that are not going to answer the phone, you're gonna have people that are a bunch of douchebags when they answer the phone, you're gonna have people that say yes to you and then don't, they don't show up to the meeting. And then you're gonna close one, right? And if you keep the ball rolling, if this statistic is right, right, and you do cl close one, right, because you are doing 60, 60 calls, and you figured like the best uh, target for you to start calling, like the best people that uh, look promising, right, you're gonna get, you're gonna, you're gonna become a millionaire. The whole, the only problem into this essentially is that in the process you are. You are not there yet regarding the person that you are striving to be. You're not that person yet. And that presents a challenge for you because it, like you're trying to bench press a weight that you're not used to it. Like maybe you can nail it like once in a week, right? Then you get twice a week. Then you start doing it on a consistent basis. And this is what I wanted to, to share with you guys is that 
these numbers are industry statistics. These are not fudge numbers. I didn't come up with these numbers are thin air. These are numbers from top producers. And obviously, if they get a team and they train more people, they start making more calls. And they do the calls in like the way they tell them to do the calls, right? So they set up appointments and then they have people to go to the appointments and then they call the, the, the contract. So it all comes down in order, like, let's go this like a reverse engineering. To have this happening, you need to be consistent. That's it. And in order to be consistent, you need to essentially have your um, mindset right. You have to be in a state of delivery and doing this and understanding that at least this is helpful for me. Maybe it's, maybe it's helpful for you guys as well. It's like, if you, before doing the calls, you know full well that you're already, already going to face rejection, you're already going to face people that, the, all the shtick, right? It makes it easier because you're just focusing on the analytical part. And what I've learned is that when your brain is on analytical mode, you're not emotional. It, it, it's just, I, I don't know why, I, it just doesn't work like that. It's like you are either analytical, it's like one side of the brain, or you either like emotional, no, the other side of the brain, right? So if you focus, you already know, okay, I'm gonna call people, some of them are not gonna answer, some of them will answer, say yes to the meeting, then won't show up, right? So it's like when you start adding those um, meetings to your Google Calendar or whatever platform you use, it's like you already know some of them will cancel, right? And I think this makes the process easier because you're not expecting too much from that person when you're calling them. It's like you're already expecting that person's gonna fail on you. I think it makes it easier in the, in the process, I think. And I, I just wanted to share these ideas with you guys. I think uh, all of us, we are trying to strive to become better people. And I don't mean like better people as like Mother Teresa or anything like that. N nothing like that at all. Just like your better version, like the, your stronger self, like when you do Rocky or something. Like in the beginning, he couldn't like uh, win and then he trained hard and then he, win, he won. And he won because he trained hard. It's the same thing here. And this is more of a, a mental process. There's not much uh, physical activity going on here. It's just a, ma a brain thing. And your brain is not used to this amount of rejection, this amount of um, bullshit from people because you couldn't possibly tell me that people are good in nature if you sell over the phone because most of them lie to you like all the time. And the idiot thing about this is that they don't know that you keep talking with people on a regular basis. You keep hearing the same things over and over again. So when you hear top producers saying that every sale is the same, it's true. It's like 100% true, like, uh, like underline it, like, it's, it's true. Because people say the same things. Like when you do the first pitch, there's a silence, right? They don't know what to say. Then they say something and then you keep like uh, the ball rolling with your second sales pitch and so on. And then you like just try to navigate through the, the loops in order to, to close the, the thing for a, a meeting. So it all comes down to consistency. That's, that's the bottom line. And that's not easy. And I'll be honest with you. Today I'm a little sick of this. I'll keep at the calls after I finish this video. But uh, it's like sometimes it's not easy at all because you like you know what you want and you want it now essentially. And that's not going to happen. So I think... One thing that happens with when I'm, because I'm, I'm a marathon runner and that helps a lot. And I heard that people that climb mountains, they do the same, which is actually quite interesting. And the trick is instead of like um, focusing on the, on the, um, like, uh, like on the top, right? They focus on the steps. It's, it's kind of uh, counterintuitive, right? Because they are like uh, going through Mount Everest or something like that, right? but they are focusing on just one step at a time, right? And one more step, and one more step. They, they have the vision on the back of their minds, right? I have the vision on the, on the back of my mind. I, I want to make two million in premiums this year, right? I know exactly what I want to achieve this year. I want to become a PhD in economics, right? So I, it's like the, the end of the mountain, right? But I find that if you focus on that too much throughout your day, it, it starts uh, aggravating you because you get frustrated. And I think if you focus on just one more call, another call, just one more call, let's rest a bit, another call, and then you complete the 60, right? Essentially you're gonna get the same result, right? 
And I think I think sometimes it's like over expectations, and that uh, leads to frustration, because essentially you are talking about a subject that most people don't want to talk about, right? They're probably not that much educated on it, and it's understandable because it's not their their field, right? So you you need to go like. Um, it's like a walking hand thing. It's like you are helping them like through the the the, the street, so, so to cross the street, so they understand exactly what the process is and how are you helping them. And I on that on that token, it's uh, it's not easy to do this. It really isn't. And I think if I see these videos like uh, from like thirty years from from now, if like I'm looking back and seeing these videos, I think I would relate more. Because when you do these, you will understand exactly um, what's stressing you out and where the problem is. And that's pretty much it. So if you already have industry statistics, right, you have a kind of a guide, right? It's like a, a guide. Okay, this is horrible. You're going through the jungle. You want to get to the other side, which has a better shots of you having the life that you want, right? So in order to navigate, you are using a map, a road map. And this road map comes from industry statistics, from the, the top producers telling you to make six, at least 60 calls, right? And out of this 60 calls, seven people, right? Seven people, four are going to disappear on you, three are going to come to the meeting, right? And out of these three people, you're going to close one. So if you focus on the premium, right? It's just a matter of the level of the premium regarding the type of individual that you are focusing on, then you're going to get very wealthy. And my mentor has the million dollar crib, he has a boat, he has the car, he has all the shtick, right? He has all the things, right? And the reason for it is because he, he stuck to it. And he's the one-stop shop, he keeps doing the, cranking the calls and all that. And I'm going through this process and I'm feeling the pain. I'm actually feeling it. And it's like, you hear all those people like the sales gurus and all those idiots out there. No one's talking about the pain that they go through, right? I'm probably the only guy here like actually telling you the things up, uh, like up front. It's like I keep doing the calls. I need to get the meetings and it hurts, right? But I keep doing them, right? And it's like, because I think it's like people re relate to that. It's like I'm tired of bullshit. I'm looking for answers, right? If I'm watching a video on YouTube, I'm not looking to like to hear uh, some fake ass guru telling me something that he doesn't have a clue, right? Like making 500 calls a day. That's a bunch of nonsense, right? You don't have enough time in the day to make 500 calls. So, so it's like, but these people have an enormous following. So it's like, it's like, one plus one equals fish. It doesn't doesn't relate. So I think I want I wanted to make this uh, these videos these rants in order for people to relate, right? So that they can see that uh, this shit is hard, right? Because you are on your on your on the road of uh, that leads to a better life. You are uh, in a way getting rid of old habits. You are getting rid of. Uh, pretty much shit that all of us have in our, uh, like, uh, it's like you have this perception of how things are, right? And then it's, it's not like that at all. So when you start reaching out to people that do have the financial wherewithal, they are very nice, they are very uh, polite, they are very articulate, they know it hurts, they know they are being helpful and they give you advice that untangles like thoughts in your mind that they're just like, um, it's a conflict, right? So essentially, it's, it's actually poetic, to be honest, because at least for me, I, I was born in a not a very good environment at all. I actually was pretty horrible. And the way for you to get out of there is reaching out to the top tier, it's, which is actually pretty remarkable because you want to get rid of r r poor people, right? And since you want a, level, a higher level of premiums, because you already did the math, right? You are basing your assumptions, your hypothesis on industry statistics. So 60 people, right? 60 calls a day, right? So who are these people, right? That's the thing, right? Because you are focusing on people that have a higher paying capacity, right? So these are higher tiered people, right? The level A people. And you're looking for these people, not broke people, right? Not where you are, right? People around you, they can help you, 
So you need to uh, reach out to, towards a better life, right? The, the fancy apartment, the, the fancy broad, the, like the, the fancy car, whatever the thing is, or if you don't, don't, if you don't want a, a wife, it's like, doesn't matter. It's like the things that you want to, to achieve in life, you are trying to become better, right? So the process of you becoming better means you're gonna feel some pain because you're not used to doing things that improve you in that sense. So it's like you, you're pushing the, the bar higher, right? So it's just a matter of, of consistency. It's, it's the main key here. It's like consistency of calls and obviously these calls, like, like I was mentioning in my previous videos, obviously you need to optimize the list that you're calling to so that you have a higher likelihood of these 60 people falling in the, the benchmark that we are just uh, mentioning, that we just mentioned in this, in this video. So I hope this helps. I usually make these long videos, low quality production, but like straight advice from, from the heart and the head because I'm a very uh, logical guy. It's just, uh, I want people to see this for what that is and not like some uh, guru out there just talking nonsense. It's just like, I, I live and die by the sword. And I, there's no schools for this. There really isn't. It's like, you can go to Ivy League schools and there's no one doing this. Essentially, it's like entrepreneur, full entrepreneur thing. So forget about, forget about uh, Amazon FBAs, forget about startups, forget about all this stuff. Pick your fucking phone and start fucking dialing. That's it. 60 calls a day, seven people, three meetings, one that you'll close. And the amount of people that you choose, the type of people that you choose are the ones that are going to relate to the premium that times five days a week times 52 weeks are gonna get you to a million dollar land. So I hope this helps. Remember to subscribe, and if you need any further advice, let me know. I'll be more than happy to jump on board and help you guys out. Peace.